Welcome to the American Journal of Managed Care Peer Exchange, Diabetes Therapy and Cardiovascular Outcomes, an update. My name is Dr. Dennis Scanlon, and I'm Professor of Health Policy and Administration and Director for the Center for Healthcare Policy and Research in the College of Health and Human Development at the Pennsylvania State University. Almost a decade ago, the FDA issued a guidance for evaluating cardiovascular risk in novel diabetes therapies. Although they were designed to ensure that diabetes therapies were safe, in a few cases, these large international trials have shown that diabetes therapies can offer cardiovascular benefits and reduce deaths. With us today to talk about cardiovascular outcomes trials are Dr. Zachary Bloomgarden, clinical professor in the Division of Endocrinology of the Department of Medicine of the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. Dr. Robert Gabay, Senior Vice President and Chief Medical Officer of Jocelyn Diabetes Center in Boston and Associate Professor at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Silvio Inzuki, a Medical Director at Yale Diabetes Center and Professor at Yale School of Medicine. And Dr. Kenneth Snow, a Medical Director for Aetna. So thank you all for joining us and let's begin. So I wanted to start by talking about um, cardiovascular outcomes in, in diabetes and really what we know so far. So the EMPA-REG outcome trial produced results that had not been seen before in diabetes care, a treatment for type 2 diabetes that was found to have cardioprotective benefits. And Dr. Nzuki, maybe I'll start with you. What made the results of this trial unlike anything seen previously? Well, it, it's been one of the most uh, frustrating aspects of diabetes care is that uh, correcting what we all agree is the fundamental metabolic abnormality of this disease, which is hyperglycemia, uh, has had uh, no, no or little effect on cardiovascular outcomes, which is very perplexing. We can reduce retinopathy and nephropathy and, and probably neuropathy, but when you look at studies over many decades, it's been very difficult to demonstrate that lowering glucose uh, with a specific strategy or any drug actually benefits the heart. Uh, so I think what Empereg outcome uh, showed us is that you can improve cardiovascular outcomes, perhaps not through lowering glucose, but through using a glucose-lowering therapy. Uh, it was the first study that demonstrated a, a strong effect on cardiovascular mortality. And uh, this was um, uh, presented in September of 2015. And one of the more um, striking results from the EMPA-REG outcome trial was that the SGLT2 inhibitor empagliflozin uh, was associated with a 38% reduction in cardiovascular mortality. I must say, when I saw these uh, results, and I was on the steering committee for the trial, um, I uh, almost fell out of my chair because it, it was uh, very, very um, striking that a, a diabetes therapy that was not a hugely powerful glucose-lowering drug could have such a uh, uh, significant effect on, uh, obviously, a very important outcome, which is cardiovascular death. Right. So this has really changed the expectations for outcome trials now going forward, hasn't it? Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, sort of what we're looking at now in terms of cardiovascular trials and how they're designed? Well, um, there's a, a panoply of these trials now underway, and I think we'll talk a little bit later on about the other SGLT2 inhibitor trials and, and some of the other uh, drugs. So those are, have already taken off, and, and the design is uh, very similar to Empereg outcome. What you do in these trials is you um, add a drug into the mix of medications uh, that uh, patients with type 2 diabetes um, have, uh, and you compare that to a placebo. So it's not comparing a one strategy versus another. It's, it's comparing uh, a glucose-lowering uh, treatment approach using a single drug uh, in, uh, uh, with, with other medications uh, for diabetes versus not using that drug. Uh, so they're, they're somewhat limited in what they can say. Uh, there are other trials uh, that we may get to that uh, actually compare uh, the addition of two separate drugs uh, to um, uh, patients with type 2 diabetes. The second important point is that uh, these uh, studies are being conducted either in patients with established CVD or established CVD and patients who have lots of risk factors for CVD. So I think it's really important not to um, uh, overinterpret these results because uh, there's always this temptation in our field, I think in most medical fields, to cut and paste what we learn from one uh, a group of patients to another. Uh, primary prevention in terms of patients without prior history of CVD 
has not been demonstrated uh, with any of these medications that we'll be addressing today.